Reflect for a moment on just how alien life on our own planet can be. There are countless species on Earth that seem commonplace to us, but if you think from the perspective of an interstellar visitor seeing them for the first time, you'll realize that much of what nature produces on a daily basis seems more outlandish than the vast majority of science fiction. So if we were ever to discover alien life, it's highly likely we'd find it mind-blowing, and maybe even a little disturbing. One science fiction project which truly excels at accurately representing these likelihoods is SNIAD, which is one of the most detailed speculative biology projects of all time. The famous fictional world of SNIAD is the creation of the one and only C.M. Koziman, author of All Tomorrows and expert in all things alien, who you can follow and support in the links below. This online world-building project includes more than 200 extraterrestrial lifeforms from several dozen lineages in an awe-inspiring amount of detail about each one. So, for this entry into the archive, I'll be taking you on a documentary-style tour across this truly alien planet, and exploring just some of the life that dwells on its surface. At first glance, the anatomy of most life on Sniad might confuse the common observer. To understand the life forms that we'll encounter on our voyage, let's first take a Cahydron, a rather average organism by Sniadi standards, as an example. Examining the inner workings of the Cahydron, you'll find a host of surprises. Beginning with the skeletal system, Sniadi bones aren't made from calcium, but a modified hydrocarbon composite that resembles very hard wood. While extremely durable, these bones burn easily, which complicates things for Sniadi paleontologists. Sniadi muscles are equally distinctive. They work via hydraulics, moving by pushing instead of pulling, and their bones have evolved to accommodate this difference. Strange though these muscles may be, they provide their owners with incredible strength relative to their size. But the oddities don't end there. Sniadi creatures also possess a second set of traditional fiber-based muscles, which cover the entire body and help pump the fluid of their hydraulic counterparts. The respiratory and circulatory systems of Sniadi animals are similarly unique, with the nostrils of most organisms located near their armpits. These nostrils are connected to lungs that work independently from one another, in a highly distinctive setup. Yet the most divergent system in Sniadi animals is their brains. Actually two organs that work in tandem, the first component of the brain is a dense knot of fibrous nerves connected to a larger system, and the second is a cryptic structure that seems to be the root of consciousness in each organism, although the author imagines that visiting or scientists struggle to understand it. But perhaps the most noticeable deviation from familiar life is that almost all vertebrates on Sniad appear to have two heads. In reality, the first head contains the organism's jaws, eyes, and reproductive system, but isn't actually connected to the digestive tract at all. Instead, all food consumption is done via the second head, which is almost like an exposed throat that leads to the stomach. This unconventional arrangement is a holdover from a distant ancestor, which most vertebrates on Sniad are descended from. In the Cahydron's case, the jaws of the first head are built for hunting, as the life form occupies an apex predator role similar to an earthly lion, just in its own unmistakably alien fashion. Indeed, we'll find much of the life on Sniad bears some surface similarities to earthly species, although others truly defy classification. A great place to continue our tour is in the mountainous forests. Here you can find the Uronix, a relative of the Cahydron and member of the larger Cahydroniform classification. Like all Cahydroniforms, the Uronix is also a predator, with a short crushing bite and long scythe-like claws. The Uronix is more than just a true carnivore, however, but also a part-time omnivore like various species of Earth bears. At 16 feet, or 5 meters in length though, the powerful Uronix rivals even the largest bears in its sheer size. Within the rivers of an equatorial jungle, you can find an aquatic cahydroniform called the crocohydron. Roughly the same length as the Uronix, the crocohydron paddles on adapted fins, snapping up organisms with its elongated jaws. A striking mix of a leafy sea dragon and an earth crocodile, the crocohydron is an effective predator, lying in wait before snapping up its unsuspecting prey. But Sniad is more than a world of predators. 
Dotting the endless lush plains, the mainly herbivorous kettle turts wander the grasslands, plucking nutritious plants from the soil with their second head. The kettle turts are members of the turtiforms, a wide-ranging group that bears some resemblance to turtles or tortoises on our own planet. Unlike their earthly analogs, however, the shells of turtiforms aren't external, but are instead encased in a layer of skin. Turtiforms also aren't able to withdraw their limbs into their shell when threatened. But turtiforms don't just populate the land. In the water, marine turtiforms like the streamlined cylindroids genus have become uniquely adapted to their aquatic environment. Their shell has become a heavy hydrodynamic hull, and the digits on their limbs have become broad paddles, which they use to steer themselves through the vast oceans much like sea turtles. On Earth, most species of sea turtles lay their eggs on land, forcing their young to make a perilous journey back to the ocean. Cleverly, however, cylindroids have evolved to birth their young without ever leaving the water. In the forested mountain ranges bordering the Great Northern Ocean, a one-of-a-kind hunter is looking for food. This is a Toxiglossus, a member of the diverse polydactyl classification and a relative of the turtiforms. These tiny lifeforms possess a spring-like extendable second head, which they use to zap their unsuspecting prey. This hunting strategy shows a remarkable degree of convergent evolution with chameleons of Earth, who use their long, strange tongues to consume insects. After all, life on our own planet can be downright alien as well. And flattened along the bottom of freshwater rivers, you might also find the peaceful platy moloch, a polydactyl offshoot that have become bottom-feeding lifeforms that spend most of their time underwater. Not an active bunch, to feed, the platy moloch drag their vacuum-like second heads over the muck to scoop up any potential food, sort of like the feeding habits of some species of stingray, which also have unusual mouths on the underside of their bodies. Unlike stingrays, however, platy mollocks aren't particularly elegant, nor do they have much of a defense against potential predators. Burrowing just under the soil, the blind, unassuming vermin phagus make their tunnels, content to be ignored by the more fantastical sniati organisms that stomp above ground. Vermin phagus are our first example of a haplobrachid, a group that is united by their lack of limbs yet nonetheless have become remarkably successful. Most haplobrachids burrow in layers of spongy vegetation called sprog, which covers large swaths of sniad surface. One carnivorous haplobrachid that tunnels within the sprog are the cytogonathus, meter-sized lifeforms that have evolved a distinctive hunting strategy. Their second heads have become specialized lures that mimic the appearance of common prey animals. Like the anglerfish or frogfish of Earth, the cytogonathus simply sticks the lure out and wiggles it around in a bizarre manner that resembles the movement of their prey, luring curious lifeforms right into the predator's jaws. Impressively, some haplobrachids have even taken to the trees. Among the branches, the large sloth snakes slowly slither towards their next meal of fruit or vegetation. At a surprising 13 feet or 4 meters long, sloth snakes are easily the largest of the haplobrachids. As you can imagine, their nickname comes from their surface level similarities to both slow moving sloths and limbless arboreal snakes. Although, like many creatures on Sniad, the sloth snakes don't neatly fit into any earthly category. On the subject of earthly or non earthly counterparts, there are no traditional insects on planet Sniad. Instead, that role is filled by curious life forms like the 4 mm long Dactylopus. These evolutionary oddities are a type of pycozoan, organisms that were once large terrestrial vertebrates but became tiny lifeforms over millions of years. Since organisms the size of insects require a variety of adaptations to function, this grand shift in size involved various unusual shortcuts, like bones that never ossify during development and a worm-like larval stage that allows pycozoans to inhabit different niches as adults and juveniles. Look closely at the leaves in the jungles of the east and you might spot the rare Arbovermis, a slightly larger and more distinctive Pycozoan. Also called Grinch worms, these endangered green lifeforms shuffle their long, tube-like bodies around on numerous tiny legs. As a result, their walking gait is likely not unlike the movements of caterpillars or centipedes, although Grinch worms don't have quite as many legs to get around with. 
Strange as Pycozoans are, however, on the isolated island continent of Thalassa, groups have evolved that resemble no other lifeforms on Sniad. For an example, look no further than the carnivorous Ophycotonos, a type of monoanticotherian that lacks front limbs altogether. A challenging species to decode, the Ophycotonos possess long, spear-like lower jaws on their first heads that help them jab their preferred prey which dwells below ground. In fishing for organisms with their long beaks, their hunting behavior is somewhat similar to that of certain birds. On the vast plains of Thalassa Island, you can spot the herbivorous bounder jaws, a species of monoanticotherians that patrol the plains in vast herds. These creatures might look a little off balance, but they actually have a highly efficient method of specialized locomotion. Their legs contain piston-like hydraulic muscles that allow them to leap about, storing energy from one bound to another. A bit like a kangaroo, although clearly only in certain regards. On a nearby island, an equally atypical life form patrols the scrubland. The red headbanger is a solitary predator with a strange name and even stranger hunting method. Charging out of nowhere, the headbanger dispatches unwary prey with hatchet-like blows of its massive head. While an impressive organism, the headbanger's island isolation is key to its survival, as on a nearby landmass, truly terrifying goliaths are waiting. Meet the size Mopus. Weighing over a ton, these giants are easily one of the biggest predators on all of Sniad. A type of tromobrachid, seismopus have fused their secondary heads with their sternums and front limbs, and have evolved the strongest jaw equivalents in all of Sniad. This gives them the advantage of being able to chew and swallow from the same mouth, with their first heads becoming thin, periscope-like organisms only useful for observation. Not surprisingly, the tromobrachids have become quite successful. Upon the vast sands of the interior desert, the related Amodromius, or sand runner, pursues prey to the point of exhaustion. Like the hyenas of Earth, these ruthless hunters often cooperate in a pack to take down larger prey. Although this behavior is likely the simple result of intersecting interests rather than genuine cooperative behavior. But even a pack of sand runners might be wary of titaniforms like Z. uroforus or giant skip birds, some of the mightiest herbivores on Sniad. At almost 20 feet, or 6 meters in length, giant skip birds are well protected while they grind down vegetation with their oversized, plant munching second heads. Indeed, their feeding habits are somewhat like an elephant, although giant skip birds grow to even greater sizes. But surprisingly, they're not the largest of the titaniforms. At last, we've reached the final life form we'll be archiving in this video. At almost 40 feet or 12 meters long, legendary Magnodires are one of the largest land animals on Sniad. Often simply called Titans, the second head of these herbivores have become super extended into long, almost drawbridge like structures. These gigantic animals spend their days grazing in a large circle twice as wide as their second head necks. We've barely covered half the orders in the Sniad project, and there's many more individual species from each order you can read about online. In part 2, we'll investigate even larger and stranger life forms. But for now, our time in this incredible alien world has come to an end. If you want to support the author, you can follow and support CM Kozeman using the links below. He's also working on a book that will overhaul many of the species with updated details, which I'm really excited for. Also, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this entry, please lend your support, and like, subscribe, and hit the notification icon to stay up to date on all things curious. See you in the next video.